All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And, uh, you know, maybe you just got done watching my Dyson, my cheapest Dyson V6 battery on Amazon video, and you realize I'm in the same shirt and same glasses. It's the same day. All right, so uh, what do we got here? Oh, we got, as you can see from the overhead, we have got a Ricar Brilliance which is one of our courtesy vacuums. Oh, we are out of focus. Focus in the right spot. There we go. We've got a Ricard Brilliance, one of our courtesy vacuums, uh, which is uh, when people bring vacuums in for repair, we give them a courtesy vacuum. If we have one available, it's uh, subject to availability, first come, first serve. But we do uh, you know, make a effort to have vacuums ready to go uh, and this particular unit is uh, from September of 2018 so we're coming up here on almost two years of this guy being in service and that's about that's about all we like to do with them um, you know we haven't had any issues with it like zero issues um, so runs like a champ as far as I know so um, in any case, what we're going to do is we are going to clean this up and we are going to get ready to sell this as a used vac. Now, I will at the end let you know if you're interested how you can get a hold of this, but a uh, great vacuum and it will be at a great price. How's that for sales? Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit more. There we go. You can see my, this is bad form. You can see that I've got a mess of cells over here from our Dyson V10 outsize video and uh, they shouldn't just be all run amok so I will set them in the corner nice and safe. Um, so what we're going to do on this is we're just going to do a general service, take it apart, get it cleaned up and uh, get it ready to sell. We'll change the filters, make sure everything's ship shape uh, so that people have a fresh start with it. Um, take that protective film off of there. Okay. So one of the things that I'm seeing right off the bat is that this guy has a motor filter right here and we're seeing there's been quite a bit of dust seeping into that filter. Um, so it's good, it catches the dust, but I do want to check in here and just make sure that everything is, uh, is copacetic down inside the uh, direct air motor. Take off the back door there. Ugh, nasty. Now this particular unit service with someone who had a fairly long repair window so um, so with that uh, you know this got pretty heavily used by one family this uh, secondary filter actually looks pretty good Let's see if we can get a look at it here um, definitely did its job didn't catch a you know it caught some stuff but the backside looks totally clean so uh, you know it the bag did most of the work. This is fairly dusty in here. I feel like there might have been a hole in a bag at some point. Um, so we'll want to get all that cleaned out. And take a look at the HEPA. The HEPA actually looks pretty good too. So if we look at that there. Um, I mean, it's, it's dirty, but the black and gray is... Um, dust from the carbon filters, or uh, carbon filters, carbon brushes, which is what creates electrical current across the motor. And so, um, I mean, that's expect, totally expected, but if we look down inside the pleats, you can see that, focused. Uh, if you look down inside the pleats, there's like no buildup of like fine dust or anything like that. So. Regardless of the fact that the um, bag, uh, that the bag, um, uh, I can't think of words, words, Matt, words. Uh, regardless of the fact that the um, bag compartment, there's the word I'm looking for. The bag compartment's a little bit dusty. Um, nonetheless, uh, definitely didn't impact the motors 
as far as I can tell, or the direct air motor. So let's go ahead. We are going to flip this guy over. All right. So one of our cars calling cards is uh, number one. You can see here, probably can't, maybe I can zoom in for you, but made in the US uh, with globally sourced components and really high quality components, steel axles. Um, we've also got brass bearing or brass bushings on all of the wheels, rubber wheels, stainless steel plate on the floor and a um, chrome steel brush roll. Um, all of which contribute to the durability of this machine. So um, the sole plate especially, you know, it's not like if you make a quality sole plate out of plastic, it's a bad thing. Mila has been doing it for years um, and they use a, a high quality plastic. So, um, you know, it, it can take impacts, no problem. It doesn't bend, it doesn't break uh, typically. So the metal sole plate though, in my opinion is probably most helpful for um, is probably most helpful for discharging static that is created on the rug when you have plastic on a synthetic fiber it just creates all kinds of static electricity this kind of grounds it and in my opinion since it's not a statically charged area that the dirt is coming into it creates a more effective clean um, so at least that's been my experience. So I really like it, you know, not even from a durability perspective, because it's not like the bottom plates, if they're made out of quality plastic, are going to break on you. But I really like it from a function standpoint. definitely got some crusties down in here so I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this out just so that's not floating around Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this guy out. So again, kind of a testament to its construction. We have the chrome steel brush roll. And what I really like, get this off. Um, you also have steel end caps here. So um, you've got a locking nut and a steel end cap. Um, that is super important from a reliability standpoint. You've got a plastic rail that the, the belt rides on and a lot of companies make these end caps out of plastic. And when you've got plastic next to plastic and you introduce hair in between them, which is common on a brush roll, what happens is it starts to melt. And we see cheap vacuums with plastic brush rolls come in all the time that have a seized brush roll because the end cap and the core have fused together or gotten very, very tight. Um, so this is, this is a great way to uh, keep it from happening and then this is a rubber insulator which keeps the brush roll from vibrating in the housing also a common problem on cheaper machines uh, when they start to vibrate they start to wear away the housing and then you know then at that point your housing is is toast um, we've got our lifetime belt which we'll take a look closer look at here in just a sec
Okay, five screws, five, no, four. Four screws, and this will come off, so we'll rotate this again. And now, we are back, and this will just simply pop off. And uh, there's definitely some, some dirt in here, stuff that we need to clean out. Again, this has been in service for two years. During that time, I clean them out. You know, I make sure that when they leave, they have a fresh bag, the bag chamber's clean, I make sure the brush roll's clean, wipe it all down, but I don't do a complete service every time. You know, I make sure that it is sanitized thoroughly with disinfectant. Um, and, uh, but you know, down here underneath the hood, occasionally you will get some buildup and this is, you know, this is, I haven't had this hood off before. So this is actually really good over here. We have our, um, our headlights. So we've got a circuit board here, um, that has our led headlights. There are six of them and, um, and then the tray that that fits on. Right here is a really cool feature. Uh, this here is the spring that keeps the handle weight low. So on cheaper vacuums, you feel, you, you know, when you have an upright, a lot of times it gets tiring because you're pushing it back and forth and you really start to feel it here in your forearm, in your bicep, in your shoulder. And that's because you're not only doing the pushing and pulling, but also the weight of the vacuum at the handle is in your hand. So if there is no like counterbalance to that weight, it can get really tiring. The lighter you make the handle, uh, you know, the weight that you're holding in the handle, the easier it's going to be to work with. So what Ricard does is it has a spring right here and it reduces the weight in the handle to somewhere in the one pound range which is great i mean if you look at if you look at other designs like most specifically shark with the way they distribute the weight on a shark uh you're looking at probably three three and a half pounds in the handle uh and that extra couple pounds makes a lot of difference when you're vacuuming a large house so really cool feature and that comes on all of her car's full-size uprights now uh, from the R25 series to the Brilliance or the R30 series, as it's now called, to their top of the line R40 Radiance. So we put it upright so that the tension is relieved on that spring. Unscrew that. Now we can let it back down. All right, so now the spring is freewheeling, but that's what that's there for. It's to make your life easier. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to start, this is probably my least favorite part. I don't like playing with uh, PCBs, if at all possible. They're just, you know, it's a delicate part. I don't like, yeah. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the whole thing out. There we go. Move that to the side. Yeah, it's a delicate, delicate thing. I, I try not to mess with them as much as possible. But that being said, I don't think I've ever had to replace one of the PCBs for the headlight on a Brilliance before or R30 as it's now called. This particular unit has been in production for, in some form, there's been a lot of revisions, but um, in some form since 2000 and, well, it's when I was working in California at a vac shop. So that was 2006, 2007, somewhere in that range. So um, so it's it's been around for a while, great machine. I'll tell you why once we take a look at the motors. the speed faster
Okay, so that comes off. This is your air channel. Kind of a nice design. The air channel goes all the way to the middle, which is gonna give you a lot more airflow, kind of evenly distributed across the, uh, across the um, brush roll. And um, let's go ahead and real quick. Come on. Real quick, I wanna check our exposure. Make sure, yeah, it's looking good. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, I forget what I was saying. Oh yeah, yeah, across the air pathway. Yeah, so, so here's, here's the big claim to fame for this machine is that the distance between, this is a two motor system. So it's got a motor here, which is a, um, which is a uh, pusher motor, and we've got a puller motor right here, and we'll look at both of them. But the pusher motor right here, the distance between the fan and the floor is that far. I mean, we're talking literally like eight, seven inches, maybe seven, eight inches uh, to the floor, which means you get extremely high air velocity down to the carpet. Um, it's the only design, it's what Ricard calls their tandem air design. And even after all these years, um, you know, uh, 15 years or so that they've been making these machines, Ricard is really the only one who makes a tandem air system like this. And if you are looking for the absolute best carpet cleaner available, it's a tandem air vacuum, hands down, hands down. Now, I like other vacuums, I like other uprights. I really like SIBO uprights, they're, they're made like tanks. They will last through anything. But, ultimate carpet cleaning is still owned by the tandem air machines. There, there is no contest. Like, I've seen it at my home, I've seen it in other people's homes. When people buy these and they've been using like a cheaper vacuum, Shark, Dyson, Eureka, uh, you know, Hoover, doesn't matter. Auric, they will fill their first bag so fast. Sometimes in the first vacuuming, they will completely fill their bag just picking up what their other vacuum left behind. That's how well these clean. I always make sure people have bags when they leave with one of these brand new, and I tell them, check the bag after your first and your second vacuuming, because I guarantee by that second one, it will be chock full. And then you'll start to see, you know, it, it normalize where you're going through about a bag a month. Um, but these are beasts when it comes to carpet cleaning uh, because of that distance to the floor. So, where is, and here's the difference. Most other vacuums draw the air up and then through a hose all the way around the vacuum and then the air enters the motor. So instead of, you know, seven, eight inches, you're talking about a matter of feet. You know, you're talking about three, four, five feet, depending on the vacuum. Uh, Dyson's are the absolute worst at this because um, they've got all those little cyclones, right? So so even though the distance isn't that far, the air has a lot of dancing around to do, and all of that lowers air velocity, right? So the more obstruction you put in front of something, the harder it's gonna have to pull to get the same amount of performance. So so um, they don't clean as well. That That's just ultimately what it comes down to, those bypass style machines. And it doesn't matter. There's great vacuums that have bypass style, like again, SIBO, Mila, you know, great vacuums, Dyson, and all those other ones too, all use bypass and they're great. They just don't give you the ultimate in carpet cleaning. Now, if you don't have a lot of carpet, like I know a lot of people in our area don't, that may not be a, may not be a feature that you care about. But if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet and you're interested in keeping it as clean as possible, and extending a life, you cannot go wrong with one of these machines. All right, I need to get this last screw. Stop talking. Okay. So, Just gonna disconnect this completely. Unscrew that. Then we will. Let's see. Let's 
just easiest to snip that zip tie. And then we will disconnect the loom. Yeah, again, I hate disconnecting the loom. It's the worst. All right. There we go. There's one. And for the second, get a very small slotted screwdriver here. And we will just very gently pry it out. It doesn't take, yeah, it doesn't take much to get it started. It's really just the getting started that's the hard part. So, there we go. All right, we're in good shape. So, pivot points on this machine. Pivot points meaning where the vacuum, the body of the vacuum pivots and hinges with the nozzle also made out of metal on a Recar, which is fantastic. I mean, yeah, you can't can't go wrong there. They do not wear out like pure plastic ones do. Now they are plastic sleeved right here, but the sleeves are replaceable. So if these ever wear out, you don't have to replace the entire body of the machine. You simply replace these plastic sleeves, but honestly, especially if you keep them lubricated, you don't have to replace them all that often. Uh, you can see on this one here, very little wear. It's still glossy in some spots. You don't see a lot of scuffing. Um, you know, and this is this has been well used. And this is not a, you know, it's not a, it's not been babied, let's say, because it is a loner. It's like, you know. You don't know what happens to them, but this one looks very good. I'm very happy with the way this one has held up. Like I said, zero issues over the two years that I've been, um, that I have been loaning it out to people. So I will happily testify that it is a solid machine. Oops. Now, if you hear a little bit more noise in the background, I do have a uh, new lighting set up today. I forgot my small LED panels at home. So I've got my huge, um, if you can see it here, got my my big Godox uh, SL60W over there uh, shining up at a bounce card. So, um, it, but it does have a fan in it. So the fan is turning, it's running at a hundred percent. And, uh, so if you hear a little bit of hum in the background, I'll try to get rid of it in post, but that would be what you hear. Okay. Awesome. So let's then talk a little bit more about the two motor system, okay? So, now we got a lot of parts going on here. That's the only downside is that these are a little bit more complex than your average bear. Here's an aside. Do not watch this video and think, hey, <laughs> that looks easy. I can service my tandem air. Don't do it. Um, it's just, it's just, they're, they're super complex. Um, and, and that's not to say that they're bad, they're just, They've, you know, they, like I said, I've gone two years with this one with zero issues and it's not been in great circumstances. So, um, so no, no problem there, but don't try to take it apart. They're just complicated machines. And I guarantee you, you will not get it back together properly uh, if you don't know what you're doing. So I will not be held responsible if, uh, if you have issues, but moving on. So this is the two motor system. Most machines only have one motor. So what does this mean for us? Well, it's allowing, it's using two motors that both do different jobs better than one another. So 
This is the direct air motor. This one is the one that pushes. So this is actually, uh, this is really great for carpet cleaning. This is the one that creates a lot of high air, a lot of high velocity airflow down to the carpet, up through the motor, and then shoots it up into the bag. Okay. Once it is in down in the bag, it comes through the filter here in the bag chamber and then into the polar motor, which is most typically what you see on machines like, you know, pretty much everything else on the market. Mila, Dyson, Hoover, you know, you name it. Uh, they pretty much all have one of these polar or uh, clean air motors. So these take filtered air and then they shoot it out through the HEPA filter. Um, and they're very good at suction, but they're not great at airflow. That's the difference. This is an airflow motor. This is a suction motor. They're both doing different jobs and they're both doing what they're designed for best. On this guy here, this also operates the tools. The tools are operated on the back here using a little uh, valve. So what's nice about this is it shuts off the tools when you're not using them meaning that you're not drawing a bunch of air through tons of hose and again, lowering your air velocity. If you are in floor mode, this is going to be doing its most efficient job. This is gonna be doing its most efficient job. When you turn on the tools, this motor meant for the carpet turns off because you don't need it. And this one switches into what it does best, which is suction and tool mode. Um, then you've got your uh, control board right here. We're not gonna mess with that. Uh, we've got our, um, our check bag indicator right here so this is using vacuum lines so it just uses like a little solenoid valve to um, to tell you when you need to change your bag um, but both really nice quality motors um, you know this one's full metal I don't know if this is one of the newer ones it's made by Samsung uh, I think most of them I think all of the new ones have a Samsung made motor in them and I think this one is the Samsung as well could be wrong um, yeah, I'm not going to take it out because it's pretty clean inside this chamber. This chamber is a little bit dirty, which is more typical just because it's dealing with all the dirt from the floor. So we're just going to take this apart and give it a little bit of a clean. Just one screw and that holds the motor in place. But what I want to do is because this is dealing with all the dirt from the floor, anything that you pick up goes through this motor. So what I want to do is because there's so much dust, I want to just make sure that there's no cracks, no gaps, make sure everything looks copacetic down through here. And, uh, you know, looking at it here, everything's solid. There are no cracks, no issues. Yeah. I don't see anything of concern. So uh, so really all this needs is a clean. The fan is in fantastic condition, looks awesome. Our motors are what your grandparents had in their vacuums. So the old vacuums with the uh, cloth bag on the outside that had no tools but cleaned the carpet like the Dickens, they had these kind of motors in them. The downside was filtration was horrible because you had that cloth bag on the outside that it dumped all the dirt into and you always thought you know when you turn on the vacuum you see that poof of dust right horrible at filtration also horrible at tools but great at carpet cleaning when the market shifted to onboard tools as well as a need for better indoor air quality with filtration we switched to these direct air motors which uh, you know, which are great for suction, for tools, for filtration, but they're not as good at uh, creating high velocity airflow to the carpet. So these guys here are what you see in most modern vacuums. Um, and that's why most vacuums don't use this style anymore. There's only a few out there that do. Ricard Superlight, Auric, and Kirby and sanitary those are really the big ones that you might see still to use this style of motor but again in those systems you don't see tools and you do not see any claims about like super awesome sealed filtration because it can do neither um so let's see now with the advent of synthetic bags that's gotten a little bit better with the filtration but tools are still a no-go Alright, 
so we'll just give this little guy a little dust up here. Cleaned up nicely, it was just a little bit dusty, no biggie. Nothing a little vacuum with my trusty Mila. The Mila underneath my bench. It lurks under there, ready to pounce. Ooh. A little tight. Got a little aggressive. Alright. Now, I cleaned out this bag chamber because it was a little bit dusty. I don't want it to, you know, stay around the motor and the bearings. Everything feels super duper smooth. I've got no issues with the motor. The armature looked fine. The electrical contacts, all that jazz. Fan looks fantastic. Um, you know, everything's turning free. No hair buildup, no dust buildup, like the really heavy dust buildup, no cracks. Everything's good. Um, so, with that, I'm not going to clean this out because there's really nothing to clean out. This is like clean as a whistle in here. Like there, if I vacuumed it, it would only be for the action of vacuuming if there's no dirt. Um, so you, that really is a testament to how well both the polyethylene bag um, or polypropylene, I should say, polyethylene. What am I talking about? Polypropylene non-woven bag and that uh, three-stage charcoal filter do cleaning the air before it enters here i mean it's it's clean as a whistle so we're not going to mess with it why mess with success right all right so let's plug these guys back in Spade connectors, man, they're made to be more convenient, but that has never been my experience. Okay. And they are certainly secure. If I can't take them out with pliers, then sure as heck aren't going anywhere. All right, so. Throw this down in here. That's right there. And. Voila, we are back where we belong. So there's a little screw that just holds the air chamber, um, holds the exhaust port onto the uh, exit area here. All right, so that's looking good. So we get that a little dust up. We're gonna go ahead and clean the top cover to the motor here. That's a little dusty again, where the direct air motor was. A little dusty up here, pretty clean. So, um, so again, we're seeing the filtration at work.
the vacuum shops that I've worked at in the past, we had we had um, uh, air compressors that we can blow the dust out with. Here, we don't have a like a back door that we can effectively use. There's one downstairs, but we can't do that while we've got you know customers and stuff. So just inconvenient to carry vacuum parts up and down stairs. So we vacuum them up. It honestly works fine. It's a little dustier up here in the shop than I would like, but we're getting some air purifiers. Air purifiers coming in stock. We're gonna use to clean the air up here. So this little switch switcheroo right here is um, when you put the vacuum upright, that turns off your direct air motor. So that that's what that's there for. Just a little paddle switch. And this is gonna go, whoop. We need this. This is the grate for our pre-motor filter. Put that in there. Put this over the top. Align the switch. And just kind of give it a little wiggle so that everything fits up. Check our gaps, everything looks good. We've got this all in place. Look at that. Look at how much better it looks down here. Actually looks clean. Uh, so that's why we do this. <clears throat> Not only just cause like other people's dust is gross, but um, you know, also for the longevity of the vacuum, right? Um, we just want it to last as long as possible. And to do that, you keep dust away from components. That's why you should service your machines. Um, another great thing about, about these vacuums, uh, is that they all use the, that they basically the screw that they use in this, it's used through the entire machine. So you don't have to like keep screws separated. There's a couple of oddballs, but like pretty much you can just put them all in a pile and it doesn't matter where one goes or the other. They're all the same size, which if which may not sound like a lot, but you know, you work on a vacuum that has like 15 different sizes of screws and get back to me and let me know how nice this is. That's it for the motor cover. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is I want to uh, shift this over here. I wanna clean out the bag compartment next uh, so that we basically have most of the body completed. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna get in behind this bag mount. So Screw that, pull that out, so that way we can clean back behind. Now, typically, when you're using a, a polypropylene bag, like the non-woven fiber bags that everybody's been talking about through the uh, through the um, throughout the uh, pandemic, um, typically when you're using those you don't see this much dust so again i think that there was a failure of a seal at the mount or perhaps um maybe a small hole got poked in a bag this is very rare to see this much dust um typically this is pretty spick and span but um there's a reason why high-end vacuums use bags uh still um, you won't really find anything in the $500 plus range uh, that is bagless, uh, with the exception maybe of the Mila Blizzard. Um, and the reason why is because this very effectively filters the air prior to the air entering the motor. We saw that the motor, the top motor where all of the air from the bag comes through, was spotless. I mean, there was no dirt in there whatsoever. Even with all this residual dirt that was here in the um, that was here in the bag compartment, no dirt in that motor, and that means that your motor is going to last longer. The problem with bagless machines is if you don't maintain them, if you miss an interval with cleaning one of those pre-motor filters, it's going to start to seep motor in, or dirt into your motor, 
and you're going to see a much, 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 much shorter motor life. Um, mostly it'll get into the bearings and eat those bearings up because it's, it's gritty and it causes friction in those bearings. Heat, friction, it just wears it away. It just, you know, eats it up. So um, the other reason is filtration. You saw how clean this motor was. That is the last step before the HEPA and then the HEPA exhausts it out into the room. So you've got super effective filtration, super clean air coming back out into the room. And the great thing about this is when you change a bag, you're in essence changing a filter. So you're constantly, every time you change a bag, you're getting a brand new main filter and everything is just running at top, top, you know, speed. So uh, it's not like the bagless machines where the dirt builds up in the filters and they tell you, hey man, it's a lifetime filter, bro. It's not, yeah, uh, and you're gonna see a decrease in performance over time. So there's a lot of reasons. It's not because people just wanna sell you bags. Um, the residuals on bags are not like, Maze balls. Uh, trust me, people who buy five sharks over a period of time because each one breaks are spending a lot more money with that company than somebody who's buying bags from her car. So uh, it's not as it's not as lucrative for them to make bagged vacuums that last a long time that they get to sell a few bags on. Um, you know, when you sell three, four, five vacuums because you don't know that there's an alternative, that's where you're making a crap ton of money. So. Uh, let's go. Okay, so we've got this vacuumed out pretty effectively, but um, one thing that I like to do is I really like to make sure that there's no dust in any of the nooks and crannies. I want this to look as spotless as possible because really over time you shouldn't see dirt build up in here. So little uh, trick of the trade here, you take a little bit of furniture polish, just a little bit, and you take just a uh, inexpensive bristle chip brush and you just work it into all the nooks and crannies. And this gives a nice sheen. It gets rid of the dust. Makes everything look as close to new as possible. It smells lemony fresh. There's really no downsides. even use a little bit too much burner polish and this one it doesn't take a whole lot okay now we've pretty much got all those nooks and crannies everything's looking pretty good you just do a little gloss up with the rag the chip brush gets into the really tough to hard to get uh, crags and crevices here and then this just gives it a nice buff up of all the areas that kind of stand out to your eye. And uh, on this particular machine, I'm not, not disinfecting it right now because when we took the machine in, because we are in the midst of the uh, sickness that shall not be named on YouTube, um, since we're in the middle of that, uh, this was thoroughly disinfected and quarantined in the basement. So we used a hospital grade disinfectant on it, made for food processing plants, and uh, it has been thoroughly made safe. So now we're just making it pretty, pretty. Okay, so that's looking really good. Uh, let's go ahead and, oop, forgot to vacuum this off.
So all this does is it just gives a mounting point for the bag. Makes it easy to take the bag off and put the bag on and, you know, it's pretty much foolproof for the most part. Okay, so now this just goes back on here so that we can mount the bag to it. Again, same old screws that we've been using throughout the machine. All right, next, uh, we'll take a look. The bag door doesn't look too bad. A lot of that's because it's not black, it's gray hides a little bit of the dust. So we're just gonna give this a quick vacuum off because I know there's a little bit of dust on it. Okay, so that is vacuumed off and now we'll put a bag in it. We'll put a new pre-motor filter and a new HEPA filter and a new Direct air motor filter. All right, how much battery we got left? Oh, we're still on, we're still doing okay. All right, so bag automatically seals when you take it out so you don't have to encounter any dust. Super nice, we're out of focus, doggone it. All right, so yeah, seals automatically when, and it has a rubber seal around here. It keeps dust from exiting. Again, non-woven polypropylene multi-layer bag, which is going to filter down to HEPA standards by itself. Um, so I'll just slide that in there. You slide it until it clicks and then throw that in there like that. Okay. So it's got a little cutout here so that you don't have to worry about, um, so you don't have to worry about the door kind of crimping over your bag. Uh, so you just make sure that it's out of the way of where the bag will go here on the sides and you're in, you're in business. So, oh, I forgot the filters. So this filter set is what I like to use uh, with pretty much all my brilliant services. It's there, there's several grades of filter you can get for these guys, but this one is the top grade. The reason why I like it, I don't know which mic is gonna sound better, so I'll just shake it for both, but this has a, um, this has a uh, activated charcoal, granular charcoal filter in it for odors. Hear that? Hear that? All right, so that is really effective on odors. This is a fantastic filter, and it's only a couple bucks more than buying the cheaper one that's non-granulated. So this is my per preferred replacement filter. So we just clip that in there. Now, We've got the HEPA, which is the same quality across all the different packs of filters. Well, there is one that's non-HEPA. It's just like a electrostatic layer, but don't use that. Use the HEPA. Um, and then clip that in there. Boom. Uh, da, 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 da. And we've got the um, direct air exhaust filter right here. And the door. Remember how dirty that one is? Yeah, that's why we're replacing it. Um, yeah, and this was super dirty, so let's vacuum this off. The nice thing about when you use these brushes with Pledge, Pledge kind of remains on there and you can just kind of keep using it, get some light dusting done like new. See? Spick and span. All right. So, in there, in the right spot. Perfect. All right. So, filters are in place. Pop this guy back on. Bam! 
karate chop. Okay, so this is all looking really good. Pretty much got the body squared away with the exception of some final detailing. So what we're going to do is we are going to start getting this ready for reassembly. Um, and that includes, we'll put the, uh, put these guys back on. So we've got our pivot points. Why is this? We're back in business. So we've got the gasket that goes between the nozzle and the motor. It goes in right. Focus. There we go. Goes in right here. And um, this pivots around in the housing, as do these hinge areas. So, what I like to do is use my left hand because I've been using my right hand to focus the cameras. Um, I like to take a little bit of grease. So, this is automotive wheel bearing grease um, so it's a, a nice quality grease and it is um, moisture resistant uh, but I use this in bearings and when I lubricate um, these guys I just put like the thinnest smear all the way around and I don't want to put so much that it attracts dirt to the um, to the spot uh, you know, overly attracts it, but I want to put enough that it just reduces friction um, and kind of makes everything flow a little bit easier. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Like, you shouldn't be seeing globs. That's just put ever so slight amount around uh, to the point where it starts to look kind of like glossy. And that is enough, more than enough. All right, um, I like, I prefer doing that in these areas as opposed to using oil. Oil's thinner, it's more viscous. Um, it, it's hard to control how much you're putting on there and it doesn't stay put. So in my experience, a little bit of grease goes a long way towards just kind of making this operate smoother long-term. So, we'll put that back. All right. So, we got that going. Got filters off to the side. Now, let's take a look at this guy. We'll shove this over to the side for a sec. So, this guy's a little, uh, this guy's a little bit, um, yeah, it's a little dirty. This is probably the dirtiest part of the machine. So I want to get down in here and just get all of this out, give it a real good clean out. We'll spray. Since we weren't able to spray disinfectant in this area when we uh, when we took it down for quarantine in the basement, we'll do some disinfectant in here as well. So let's vacuum it out first. Looks better already. 
we'll do a little wipe out here with uh <clears throat> so this is something that we don't sell because really uh the um it's uh epa regulated because it's considered a uh it's considered a um, pesticide because it kills bacteria and viruses. Um, but uh, this is a um, quaternary solution, quaternary ammonia solution. It's basically the same stuff, but in a heavier solution uh, as you get with like say Clorox wipes or Lysol wipes. So um, very good disinfectant and that's what we use here. So I'm just gonna give it a little spray off and then wipe it out. Don't want to go too heavy, just enough to get things covered, but not soaked. And then um, what I'm going to do is just wipe this out. Put a little bit of grapefruit essential oil in it that smells really nice too. Um, Okay, so then we'll just give it a little brushy brush. I mean, this thing is cleaning up so nice. This was just a fine layer of dust. It looks so good, guys. It looks fantastic. Great. So I'm going to do there. Um, notice that the uh, another part that's commonly plastic on other vacuums is a um, is the uh, handle release pedal uh, is made out of metal. This is typically plastic on other cheaper brands of vacuum or even more expensive brands of vacuum, uh, and it has like a little roller bearing right here, which uh, which keeps it from wearing on the body. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little drop of Dupont. Teflon oil. Yeah, it's a little smear. I mean, it just takes a tiny little drop. And uh, this is our idler bearing for the belt. This is a hall sensor, so the sensor is right here, and there's a magnet on this wheel. When the belt's turning, it will tell the system that everything's okay. If this slows down too much or if it stops completely, the hall sensor will realize that and then it will send the signal to the motor that it needs to shut off. Um, and it's that system coupled with this serpentine belt, uh, which is a really high quality serpentine belt that allows the car to give their machines a, or at least the R30, the R30 models, the Brilliance, allows them to give them a, um, it allows them to give a, the vacuum a lifetime belt warranty. So if you ever break the belt on this, which does not happen because it's not a stretch belt, and um, then you get a new one for free. You're back from uh, some uh, memory card slash battery running out issues. So, um, These, uh, here's the thing. If I haven't lost you yet, I appreciate you. You truly love vacuums because these are complicated machines and they take a little while to take apart and put back together. And this one even really isn't that dirty. So, uh, so I do appreciate you sticking with it, but 
trust me, if you stick with these videos, you will learn something about, uh, you will learn something about these, uh, backs and, uh, you know, better floor care, if that interests you. Um, mostly it's just me geeking out about stuff, you know, and I'll admit it. So we got this disinfected, got it cleaned up. Um, so this is looking pretty good, pretty, pretty good. All right. So now we are going to go ahead and grab these guys. Remember we, we lubricated the, um, we lubricated the plastic bushings that go inside these metal sleeves. Let's give them a little dust off. Those are really clean, actually. Surprisingly. Okay. So now what we do... I threw out my back last week, so... Uh, everything hurts a little bit. Um, but now what we're going to do is we are going to... Take that. Feed it through. All right, so now these slide down into their grooves. This slides down into its grooves. Everything's in place. Everything looks copacetic. It's aligned. So now we can go ahead and take more of these screws. And where are these in here? So these are complicated machines and you probably will hear people occasion, on occasion deride the tandem air design um, online. Uh, you know, because it is, it is an, uh, it's a unique design. I won't say oddball, but it's a unique design. Um, but it does what it's supposed to do very well. Um, with that, when these first came out, um, the first machine to come out was the larger Radiance model, what is now the R40. And uh, when they first came out, they had some teething issues. I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, you know, the first couple years of models on those, uh, you know, had a ton of updates. Now, credit where credit is due, parent company of Ricard Tacconi took care of those issues. So there were, there were multiple updates, and they made sure that... Anybody who needed the updates got them for free. So if you had an issue with your machine, it was one of the updated parts, we'd throw it in, no problem. I think they came at the time with like a seven year warranty, something like that. So, you know, it, it all worked out. One of the, and also credit where credit's due, they stuck to the design. When they came out with Brilliance, which was about a year, year and a half, two years later, after the Radiance, um, it, these guys were pretty good right out of the gate couple teething issues again but nothing major and since that time they've continually improved um you know with with revisions improvements uh you know some of them aesthetic some of them mechanical but really i mean as a testament to how well they have refined these machines even though they're complex they 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 are very reliable now um you know and they have been for for you know 10 12, 13 years. Um, so, uh, so these are, you know, it's, it's a testament to what a good company can do when they pay attention to customer feedback and also dealer feedback, um, you know, and, and 
Uh, I think these are fantastic machines now. If I needed an upright, if I needed a if I needed a vacuum specifically for carpet, I would have one of these. No question at all. This is the vacuum I would have. Now my house has mostly bare floor, few area rugs, zero carpeting. So I use a canister um, in my house because it's it's more suited to the flooring that I'm I'm using it on. You could use an upright, but canisters are just they're they're bare floor monsters. They're they're just so convenient. Uprights are great for wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, um, no question about that. But uh, you know you can you can make the canister work great on carpet. You can make a upright work good on bare floor, but I, my preference is the canister for bare floor. So, but if you have carpet, this is the ticket, man. Um, I, I would have one of these. I would if I bought a house with carpet right now, I would pull one of these guys off the shelf, and that is what I would use. All right. Pop this guy. Oops, hit my camera. Don't do that. Okay. Make sure we're focusing. Oh, guess. There you go. All right. So we're going to put this spring back. Just because I don't like it flopping around out there. It's in my way. Ah. Get up close and personal. to work on moving these cables back to where they belong. So there's some channels that these go up and through. Sorry, my head was in the way. Hopefully we're still in focus. Um, so we're gonna move these into their channels. That looks good. And then there are a couple of these screws with these plastic washers on them that hold everything in their channel properly. The real trick here is to make sure that you have enough slack so that when the vacuum goes upright, um, when the vacuum goes upright, it doesn't yank on the wiring loom. tight still. Don't love it. Whoa, we're out of battery already? What? All right. This battery better last. This is a genuine can Canon battery. So I did something stupid. You know, I tell people don't buy replacement batteries for your Dyson, man. Uh, I bought replacement batteries for my M50 and I regret it. It was really poorly spent money. They are horrible. Um, and uh, so I need to get some, I've got a bunch of genuine batteries for my EOS R, but for my M50, I gotta get some more genuine, genuine. Ah, I just wanna get this machine done. Because it's taking forever. If I, I get one more phone call. Okay. They're all from my wife. I love you. So, we got those in place. Oh, I needed, they're too tight. Yep, I remember now, I remember what I'm doing.
There we go. That will be better. All right. Oh yeah. Yeah, plenty of slack. We're not yanking on the wiring anymore. Okay, thank goodness. All right. It's more just the hurdles that I've run into doing this machine as opposed to the machine itself. Life. All right. Okay, now we will throw this guy on here. The improvements that they made along the way on these machines is the uh, original old old ones had uh, two um, like uh, actual light bulbs one were here and one facing right here um, instead of the LEDs and they get hot and they would end up melting the housing um, and melting the, uh, the hood where the clear headlight panel is um, didn't happen on all of them, but it happened enough. I'm really glad they did the LEDs because these are pretty, pretty good to go. All right, so we shall drop this back in. I'm being uber gentle. There we go. If I would pay attention to the markings, I'd get it in the right spot. There we go. All right. All your instructions, Matt. All right. Forgot to put this grounding wire in here, so we'll uh, throw this back. Over here. Is a good way to protect your circuit board. Okay. Put that 
back in his channel. We will plug in our loom here. Probably should have done that first, but this will work. This away. All the way in. All right. There we go. Actually, gonna pull that up. Love that. All right. There we go. Out of the way of the belt. Perfect. All right. So we've got our tension pulley here with the hall sensor. We've got our belt. We have to put this on first because once we put the hood on, it needs to be in place or uh, things do not. You'll have to take that hood back off to put this in place. So there's our lifetime belt. There's our tensioner and we are good to go with the belt coming through there so everything looks uh copacetic okay good so we're good here looks a lot better than it did before huh clean now i'm just cleaning off this hood pop this back on here oh you know what i forgot to do i like to this is all cleaned out there's some, just a little bit of rubber residue there from the belt but I'll just do a quick wipe on that all right now it's clean i like to do a quick spritz of the um furniture polish down here in the lens area and give it a nice clean because this helps um, keep static electricity from clouding up that lens with dust. So it just keeps things nice and shiny. I like vacuums, look good. Come on. Sitting on top of that, that's why. Okay. Yeah, now we're in place. Okay, cool. So, now we will do the brush roll, and uh, we're just going to give this a quick clean off. I like to use a hook if it's not a lot of hair. If it's a lot, I'll cut it off with a box cutter, but this is not enough to get out the big guns. These hair brush rolls are pretty good about not wrapping you know uh i know that shark would like to take the credit for having br the first brush rolls that don't wrap with hair but there are some brush rolls out there that don't go bananas with hair wrapping and this is one of them and it doesn't have the shark's weird comb on the on the um Zero M, I think is what it's called on the sharks. I've got one right here. Yeah, it's Zero M. And the Zero M models that have the comb that cleans the brush roll, I I tested one and I broke at least one, if not two, of the combs just picking up normal junk. You know, like stuff that you would normally pick up with a vacuum would get caught between the brush roll and that comb and it snapped the comb off. Guess what happens then? Your brush roll wraps with hair, shark. All right. Might sound a little bitter towards shark. I don't like them. They're really poor to consumers. 
And that looks super clean. It feels super, there's no hair under there. Feels super smooth, super loose. Get off of their hair. Get rid of this. While I'm doing that, I'll do a quick clean off of this guy. Got the hair out of the way. This feels solid, like a rock. All right. I'm gonna hate myself for this, but I'm gonna get into the brush roll. Nope. I rarely take these apart because Again, the bearings are usually, if they feel fine, they're fine. But this is for education and science and posterity and all that jazz. So here you go. Oh. There we go. Okay. This is what a quality brush roll looks like, folks. Even on the end that is plastic. I shouldn't be show showing this to the screen, not the lens. Um, that doesn't work. Look at that. That is spotless. That's two years of use in homes, and it is just absolutely spotless. Let's look at this other end here real quick, which is still locked on. That's the only thing that I'm... Oops. Oh gosh. They're so tight. Where's my, where my pliers? So tight. Mm. Oh, I gotta kind of work it. There we go. Oh man, you didn't see any of that. Sorry, I was out of frame. Need to pay better attention. Here you go. This is what I'm doing. I'm holding the metal end cap with my pliers while I take the locking nut off because these things are beasts to get off. All right. But the nice thing is you rarely have to take them off because, again, look at this. This is the other side. Sealed. Ball bearing. This is absolutely spotless. Nothing in here. And again, this is after two years of being in multiple different homes as a loner. Zero issues. <sighs> Amazing. These brush rolls are fantastic. And a lot of it has to do with these little fiber, oops, little fiber rings that run around here. They just do a great job of keeping the dirt out. So um, I've always been really happy, particularly with this design. I actually prefer this design. The, um, the R40 or Radiance has a similar design, um, but it has three, it's extruded aluminum instead of steel. And it has three rows of bristles instead of two now i will say about that brush roll that agitator that it is um it is better at agitation than this one it has more constant contact with the floor that being said um 
I feel I just like this one. It's just it's just basic. It's simple. Like it's just a good old fashioned agitator, and I like it. I like things that work, and this works. All right, so we are gonna throw that back on there. And before we throw it in the machine, we are gonna go ahead and do a quick spritz of the, ow, don't do that. All right, I'm gonna do a quick spritz of the disinfectant because why not? Oh yeah, look at that shine, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. So now we loop that around in this really tight fit, getting it back into place. Voila, there we go. Everything's looking fantastic. What I am gonna do real quick, get this a little spritz of the old furniture polish again because chrome steel likes to smear if you put a little coat of the wax on there you don't get like fingerprints of schmutz on there it just looks cleaner I'm all about it get some of that fine dust out of there oh yeah guys this thing is looking Fine. Okay. Put that back on there. Oops, wrong way. Okay. Why am I using the manual screwdriver? Why? Oh, and I haven't screwed. Oh, jeez. That. Cart before the horse. I didn't screw the hood on. Dumb. Dumb, man. Dumb. Okay, so this is all looking good. A little spruce up there. Everything looks fine. Um, these look a little grungy. I'm gonna clean them up off camera because you guys need to get done with this video. All right, so. 
give this a little spritz of the uh, burnish polish. Put the back here, get some little crevices. Now, certain furniture polish works better than others. I'm using right now Up and Up from Target. It's not my favorite. It was convenient at the time. Um, Pledge is okay, like the name brand. I used one in the past made by this one before, and that one worked pretty good. Um, one that actually works really good that we carry here in the shop and I'm just kind of waiting to use it again until this can runs out is uh, beeswax. Um, it's not actual beeswax, it's a furniture polish made for uh, you know appliances, furniture, that kind of stuff. It's a super cool stuff. Works super great on stainless steel and also works really well on vacuums. So that is what I'm going back to once I'm out of this stuff. I just want to use it up. You know, waste not, want not. All right. So, oh, gotta put this back in. E. Metal wand. Put that back into place. Perfect. And we got our dust brush. Give that a little vacuum. Just give that a little dust off. It's really not dirty, it's just dusty. There we go. Looking good. All right. Works fine. All right. Roll this over. All right. Now, those. Um, those need to come off because nobody wants to buy that where it says Curtis vacuum on it, right? I mean, I will tell people honestly that it was a courtesy vacuum, but nobody wants the sticker on there. Am I right? Am I right? Um, so we just take this guy and peel him up. And now, while I do that, we're going to switch to a sweet speed up so you can get to the end. on there all right so with that we have a serviced former courtesy vacuum that really looks and feels like new i mean it's got a couple of scuffs on it but it's all cosmetic this thing is clean it is running sweet so here's the deal i just took two of these out of service i've already serviced the other one so uh, both of these are going to be on our floor at a drastically reduced price. I mean, um, you know, the new ones run $10.99 and this is going to be substantially cheaper than that. But it is a two-year-old machine, 90-day guarantee, no red carpet service plan. So weigh your options, what's most important to you. But this is going to be a smoking deal if you want a really good vacuum at a really good price. So if uh, if you are interested uh, and you're in the Lynchburg area or if you're not in the Lynchburg area and you want to get a hold of us, we'll ship it to you. So um, definitely check us out. 
I will leave our phone number. I will leave our um, email address in the notes. So get in contact with us if, uh, if you're interested and we will uh, get you squared away with a really nice vacuum at a good price. Uh, again, these run $10.99 new. So, um, and you're looking at, uh, you know, less than half of that uh, for a, you know, mildly used one that is in great shape. So uh, definitely get in contact with us. We'll talk it through and uh, go from there. If you like this video, if you stuck with it, thank you. Uh, yeah, you are one of the vacuum faithful. So uh, go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe. That really helps us out a lot. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you can. I know that's what every channel says, but it helps us out a lot. So do that, and we will talk with you next time. Bye.